And, and if they say, well, how do we know if we're compatible? You say, well, I like to make sure that we're compatible mentally and emotionally. And then the physical is very easy for me to teach. Don't worry, my love. I understand my body very well and I'm very good with communication. And when the time comes, I will teach you exactly what you need to know to make this body do what you want it to do. I love that shit. questions bring it so this is our second official session let's dive into this my love let's go you look beautiful so do you oh look we're matching uh, oh, hey. look at us um okay so i'm halfway through the book love it so uh i you know the first half of the book for me was a lot of stuff that I'm familiar with. I felt like the first half of the book was all entirely about, I read some notes, changing yourself and your habits to increase understanding of your self-worth and how to love yourself. Yes. That huge chunk. I mean, that is like the foundation, of course. Um, so, and I was familiar with a lot of that stuff. So it was good to take notes and remind myself, oh yeah, shit, you're not doing that. Um, um, also, I think it's also really interesting to point out that this is not a book for people who want to hook up. It's, because I feel like those are the people who get so angry when I talk about what I'm doing. Right. You know, um, I've actually talked to a lot of guys in my gym uh, and tell, like talking to them about what I'm doing. And all of them are like, what the fuck, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, good to know, good to know. Um, I'm like, cause what you, you or your response to that shows me everything. And that's the whole point of this book. Yeah. And it's been so interesting using these techniques just on even men that I'm not going to, I mean, a lot of these men are married and stuff um, and I'm not interested in them, but it definitely does make you see their character. Yes. <clears throat> it helps you because listen, we're, we're on a journey to find the right person. That's and right. the sooner we understand if they're right or wrong, the sooner we stop wasting time and energy and focus on the wrong person. And so yes. we introduce a no kissing for three months dating rule, which is the concept of getting to know each other before making a selection what you realize is who's mature enough to do that journey and who just wants convenience. Yes. Maturity versus convenience. I think I wrote something down like that. Well, anyway, we'll get through it. <laughs> okay. I loved, you are such an intuitive person. Like I am totally a junkie for meditation and mindfulness. And I'm reading Supernatural by Joe Dispenza right now and like energy and all of that. And I love science. I love science. Even though I'm not like the smartest science person, it still always intrigues me. I love it. And so what I, I did not ever know that meditation actually shrinks your amygdala mm -hmm. to cause you to uh be able to well it therefore decreasing your desire to fight to pounce you know also your impulse controls and stuff like that so i love that yeah. i also have I also have these all over my room. Yes. Like love all it. over the room. I did them immediately. That's the first thing that I did. So Amazing. Under my TV. I look at them all the time. And I've had a lot of, I've had a lot of 
shit I've had to unravel as a result of it. Because, so my first husband, we didn't kiss until we got engaged. We didn't have sex until we got married. But that was a mistake. And um, the motivation behind it, what was controlling my impulses was my fear of God. Right. So then I started dating after him and I wanted to chase the rainbow and have sex with everybody. I truly thought that I would taste the rainbow and like, but after two guys, I was like, this is not for me. Like, I felt so disposable and used. So I'm thinking like, okay, what is my motivation for controlling myself? And boy, has this book been, how about just being a mature fucking adult, Holly? Like that has stung, to be honest with you, that has really stung and made me realize like, are you really a teenage like asshole? <laughs> like, can you really not control yourself? And it led me to think, to really understand, yeah, I'm, it's not that I can't control myself. It's that I tease. I like to tease and test the waters and then things get out of control, right. you know? So. I recognize that I have a big part to play in that. Right. And why I'm teasing. I'm teasing. There's a lot of reasons that I wrote down, but basically, like you said, for validation. Yes. Which is silly because I know inside myself, I know that I'm a beautiful woman. I'm free. I have freedom in sex. I... I don't need to prove that to anyone or tell anybody that. But apparently there's still something in there that is doing that. So I'm trying to uproot that. Right. And I had, I was talking to my life coach about it yesterday. Okay. I have a whole sheet about that. Okay. I'm just going to hop around. Yeah. My first question is, and I think I know what, how you're going to answer this, but why three months? Is there science behind the magic of that? Of course there is. Of course there is. I know. Of, of course, course there is. We are not the first ones to use a three month rule. We women, we people who are dating, who are using three months to vet. We're not the first to do this. Corporations were the first to do this. Ah, right. They have what they call a probation period okay, your resume looks good. Okay, you presented well at the interview. Let's see if you are who you say you are. I'm not going to give you, I'll hire you. In other words, I'll give you time to show me who you are. I'll give you time to see if we work well together. And if we do, I give you the added benefits. That's the relationship status, kissing, sex, exclusivity. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to give the added benefits to somebody I should fire. Yeah, definitely. And now corporations do that. I feel like it, there's, it's deeper than that. It's, you know, I hear people, I hear other people say, um, it's hard for somebody to wear a mask for three months. Okay. You know, it's even in your book, you're like, literally I've seen people fail at two and a half months yeah. and their true colors finally come out. And you're so grateful that you didn't give them all your treasures. Yeah. Um, and you're also grateful that you didn't negotiate it down to a lesser period. Yes. Yeah, that's true. But it's like, I feel like there's something more. I feel like I know it too, but I don't know what it is. Right. Like I've heard somebody else talk before about something happens at that three month mark. I'll have to think about that more. Okay. So 
I also had this thought. Uh, kissing and sex before getting to know each other, it's like playing house, right? Right. You're pretending to have a connection that's not really there. Right. Because I feel like that, you know, sometimes when I'm laying in bed alone, I'm like, I literally can call any of my exes and they can come over and we can play house. Right. And then, of course, we'll have to like break up all over again because they're toxic and crazy. But I think that's what we're really just desiring. We were, we're trying to get that connection superficially. Mm -hmm. So that makes more sense to me. Okay, Holly, what, this is why we're waiting for three months because it's just superficial and you're trying to play house. Well, they, they call it chemistry, don't they? I want to feel some chemistry. Yeah. And we're confusing chemistry because we're making it all about physicality. So of course there's chemistry when you're physical, when you touch, it creates oxytocin that makes you feel warm and fuzzy. When you kiss, it creates yeah. aphrodisiac, amphetamine, antidepressant. There's your chemistry right there. But the chemistry, when they say chemistry, it's like the meaning of chemistry as we use it in dating and relationships is, are we a good fit, right? I need mm -hmm. to know if the chemistry is there. In other words, are we a good fit? But a good fit is beyond physicality. A good fit is also mentally, emotionally. And are we a good fit when it comes to mentality? Are we a good fit when it comes to maturity? Are we a good fit when it comes to division of labor and how we understand that? Are we a good yeah. fit when it comes to generosity? So if we are, then I start to think about you more and more and more when we're apart. I start feeling things for you. I start getting excited about seeing you again. I start feeling happy and warm and fuzzy in your presence. All of that is chemistry. All of that is chemistry. So if we don't develop actual chemistry and we just jump straight to physical chemistry and then try to develop the rest of the chemistry, we're skipping steps. And yeah. so my thing is, if I just wanted to get physical, I'll go get physical. Mama doesn't have a problem. I don't care about body count. I'll rack up 500 if I want to, because right. what I did is not who I am. So if I just want that physical chemistry, I can go get it tonight. Girl, I can get it in an hour. Okay. For sure. It, it's so easy. That's not what I'm looking for in a long-term relationship. I need the mental and yes. the emotional. And if you cannot create chemistry with me on those levels, why would I give you the kissing and the sex? So, so true. So true. Okay. Uh, more questions. Mm -hmm. When you said that during those three months that you should talk about sex. Yes. How deep of a dive are we talking about? So you want to, you want to like the longer you go, the deeper you can go. If they want a deep dive right away, it's all about sex. Okay. You, dive, you know, but like, here's, here's what happened with me and my husband. We we spent time together and the more I got to know him, the more I liked him, the more I liked him, the more excited I became at the thought of seeing him, the more excited I became at the thought of seeing him, the more I touched him because mm -hmm. I was conveying how much I appreciated his presence. I would touch his hand, touch his back, touch his shoulder, lean up against him. Right now I started to develop something beyond fondness, I really started to become very attracted to him. So in addition to liking him as a human, I started to find him more attractive. And that combination created really strong chemistry. And so we started getting more flirty, more sexual, more intense, more intimate. Now we still weren't kissing, we still weren't having sex. But it was like, mm, look at you, right? The, the touches became more like, mm, look at this. And the conversations became more sexual. And so we were talking about what our experiences were, what kind of people we were with, what sort of things we did sexually, what sort of things we hadn't done yet, what sort of things we would like to do, what we were open to trying. So builds up the personal 
And then you can get so deep into the sexual before you even ever kiss. So I feel like in the past, um, cause I've, all, I've never been a girl that's like, like we're having sex on the first night. Um, that's, I mean, there was my first boyfriend, <laughs> but that's because it was supposed to be just hook up. It ended up turning into a relationship but not a good one. Mm. Like I knew on the first date he wasn't, and I should not, anyway, you learn. Um, so with the men, I, I always say like, I need to go slow. I need to, um, you know, trust you and feel safe and da, 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 da. But I, in a, in a, in an effort to reassure them, that look, the sex is going to be good. I just need you to wait for it. Right. I end up, you know, talking about how high my libido is, everything I like to do and how free I am in the bedroom and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then what I find is that that's then all they want to talk about. Yes. So that's why I would wait and build up the personal before getting to that stage. Do you have like a number in mind? At least no. a month. I would wait at least. Oh, okay. Yeah. I would wait at least a month. And then it. so if they want to get like, you know, deep into the sex talk, into sexualizing in the beginning, say this honestly is a great conversation to have, but it's too early to have it now. I want to see if we get along as people before introducing talk about sexuality. Okay. Yeah, because I feel like I jumped the gun on that yeah. to reassure them, but then it just bites me in the ass. When you say jump the gun, do you mean you bring it up before they do? Yeah, sometimes I do. So the word reassurance actually is inaccurate there because they're not asking for comfort and reassurance. So it's when I say like, you know, I need time to feel safe and da 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 before we have sex, right. I can see the disappointment. Right. And so I'm trying to reassure that disappointment. Like, don't worry, dude. Yeah. It's going to be okay. Like, we're good. And and then they're like, well, but how do you know if you're compatible? Da, 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 da. And I'm like, believe me, yeah. Yeah, we're going to be fine. So that's that's. Uh, point that's a good point so you're so you instead of saying i need time now you're going to say i'm using a no kissing for three months data roll no kissing no sex no sleep right. for three months so you take away the vagueness you make it very crystal clear easy yes. to understand and visualize it's tangible it's a thing now because it's a set date and, and if they say well how do we know if we're compatible you say well i like to make sure that we're compatible mentally and emotionally and then the physical is very easy for me to teach. Don't worry, my love. I understand my body very well and I'm very good with communication. And when the time comes, I will teach you exactly what you need to know to make this body do what you want it to do. I love that shit. That is such a much elegant way, more elegant way of saying it. Yeah. I'm so glad you're recording this because I'm gonna have to go back and watch that quite a few times. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's literally all I need to say. Yeah. I don't even need to say, I mean, like I'm saying stuff like, yeah, I'm a morning and night girl. Like I'm a, uh, these positions, like these are my orgasms. Like I'm saying so much. I'm like vomiting yeah. it all out and it's unnecessary. It's, okay. It's an insecurity. It comes, yes. it comes back to that low lying fruit, getting that validation from sexuality, which is super easy to get. Well, and not only is it an insecurity, and I do recognize that I have a whole journal entry here. I've been writing about it, but I am terrified that they are not going to match my libido right. or my um, freedom in the bedroom. Cause I've been with men like that yeah, and it, bleh, it sucks so much. 
they make you feel like a whore, you know, or I mean, I've been called names, you know, like I have a Jezebel spirit or I'm a seductress or I'm this and this. I'm too much. I'm too much yeah. in the bedroom is what I would get. So I'm, I'm, I'm fearful mm-hmm. that they're not going to match what I have. And I guess that's just. You have a history of picking people who've stepped on you to elevate themselves. Do you not? Um, can you expand on that? Uh, your ex who said you were overweight, stepped on you to elevate himself. Critic. So they criticize me in order, I guess, to feel better about themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they are feeling inadequate in that area. So they don't want me to feel su- superior or good period. Were those people who said you were too much, were they people who stepped on you to elevate themselves? I mean, yes, ultimately. Okay. So we're we're not going to believe them. True. We're not going to believe them. Yeah. I'm not, and I don't believe, so I was with one man. Yeah. That showed me that I was more than enough and the total package. Um, And he met my drive, even exceeded it, which I was like, wow, that's amazing. Um, But the right relationship, by the way, because I've always been too much when it comes to affection in all of my past relationships. I'm finally with somebody who gives me all the affection I want, plus, plus. Yes, the problem with that guy ended up being that he was actually relying on, he was codependent. He was relying on me for all of his happiness. And so if I did say no to sex for a legit, like migraine, like I'm vomiting or um, a death of a family member or something, he was devastated. He couldn't handle it, no. which really sucked. Yeah. Cause I totally loved him, but, um, but I guess, uh, I mean, I guess the fact is I just got to go through the three months and then they're never every, every man I've asked about their libido always says, Oh girl, I can keep up. Da, 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 da. But I can then we. Up. Yeah. And then we get together and they're not keeping up. So I guess only time will tell with that too, unless you know of any tricks to find out ahead of time. Well, um, so I, I, so I would spend a little bit of like, get like over an initial hump because you might reject them because right. You see red flags or they're, they're sexualizing too fast. They're turning you into an object, not a person. Uh, they're pressuring, they lack patience, they lack impulse control. They're not at the maturity level that you, you want. You're realizing they're not as intellectual as you like, right? So give a little bit of time to dismiss them for other reasons. And that's why I said like, wait about a month. So give a little bit of time, give a few dates, see how you're picking up on their vibe, see how you're liking their mind, and then start poking questions in there. So, so like ask a question like, um, Hey, so like when you think about how much sex you like to have, like what's an ideal amount for you? So instead of putting your information out there, I like to have it twice a day. Instead of putting your information out there, do some information gathering. What I have found is that number one, the men who respect my wishes to wait have the lower sex drive that's been my experience that doesn't make it fact and then I find that when we're dating they're they're so freaking horny because I haven't had sex with them yet that they say that their sex drive is up here and it is for the first couple of months but then it drastically decreases 
Yeah. If I just had bad experiences it or. Is, it's really normal for that to happen. Now, when you say sex, are you okay with what I call quick and easies? So it basically like a loop it up and stick it in kind of thing, like not a whole yeah. lot. Yeah. Okay. Um, because the easier you make it, the easier it is to get. Uh, yes. Like when it comes to anything from men, the easier you make it, the the easier it is to get. So um, it, it does, like my husband and I, when we first got together three times a day, now it's once a week. I'm okay with that because my sex drive isn't so high. Um, but if my sex drive was higher, then I would facilitate getting more. I would say, baby, um, you know, I need a quick and easy at least once a day. How about I, you know, meet you at the shop, right? Yeah. How about first thing in the morning? How about before you go? We just, we just fit that in. We fit in a quick and easy. How about uh, when you get home from work, you know, I'll give, put some food in your belly or before we eat, let's just hit the bathroom. I'll lean over the counter. Let's do a quick and easy, right? And like, let's, and we'll make it spicy. We'll make it sexy. We'll switch up the places. Sometimes you'll come home and I'll yeah. go over the kitchen table like, Come on, baby. Right. right. And, I'm ready. You know, and so you can you can create that communication where your drive is facilitated and somebody who loves you is is able to accommodate you, especially if you communicate. Listen, I just like to have that. I like how it makes me feel closer. I like how it makes me feel connected. I like the sensation. And if, touch. We get, if we get this done at least once a day, baby, I'll take care of the second time I want to do it. But if we can do this at least once a day, I'm good. Yeah, I guess my experiences were unique. One of the gen the man men just had an extremely low testosterone level. We found out another guy was, turns out he was an addict. And so that can mess up your drive as well. Yeah. So, and you're also, you know, you're hitting men at an age where that testosterone level is definitely going down. Maybe you need a younger man, my love. You know, um, maybe you need more than one. What now? I can have more than one. You can have anything you want. It's your life. Well, yes. Hold on now. Uh, You're so there. Uh, you think that there are men out there that are genuinely okay with sharing their woman? So you can negotiate, right? You can you can say as as you're exploring somebody. You can say, I really like you. Do you think you'd be able to keep up with my sex drive? If you can't keep up with my sex drive, are you okay with being a primary relationship while I have a secondary sexual relationship to satisfy my itch? Yes. Okay. Okay. There it is. That would be so much fun. I think probably a lot of work too. <laughs> uh, you know, depending on how you set up your secondary. Yeah. Right. It doesn't, because it can be know. sex only. It, it, so this, yeah. Sex only, not emotional. Mm -hmm. It's so, I follow polygamists on TikTok. I, I am so intrigued by their lifestyles. For some reason, I just, probably because of, I grew up in purity culture, I just don't think it applies to me. This is that I can't. Polyamory. Polyamory. Yes. yes. What's the difference between polygamous and polyamory? So polygamy is um, you have a main spouse and there's two other spouses sharing the main spouse. And oh yes. Is divided one night here, one night there, one night here, one night there. There's there's sort of like an equality in essence. Like you're supposed to spend an equal amount of time. You're supposed to treat your other your your two spouses equally. 
Uh -huh. um, because it's like sister wives kind of thing, right? Uh -huh. That's polygamy is you're my wife and you're my wife. And I, I treat you equally so that you're not feeling like you're competing, even though you, there's still jealousy, there's still a sense of competition. Trust me, I've watched the sister wife show forever, right? Yes. Because I'm very interested in this kind of stuff, sociology. Well, that's polygamy. Polyamory is I have different partners for different things. And I'm not like, I might be married to one, but I'm not married to the other. So I have a primary relationship and this is my main relationship. Mm -hmm. And I give my main relationship, my main attention and my secondary relationship fulfills what isn't in my main relationship. And I use this to fill the rest up for me. But my main relationship is my number one and my next one is my secondary. Okay. Yeah, that would be really cool. I I was in a relationship with somebody who had low testosterone and I went to him and I said, this is just not, can I, can I have yeah. something on the side, whether it be a woman or a man or a threesome or just something, I need something. And he refused. Right. So then I felt stuck, but so okay. Something that you can do in a relationship that can make things a little bit more juicy and exciting is going to swingers clubs. Yeah, we and did you, have, yeah. And you don't have to swing in a swingers club. I would go to a swingers club as an exhibition and a voyeur. Yes. Me and my partner would have sex twice. So I, we had one here in Charlotte at that time. It no longer is here now, but I did ask him to go with me to that because it had different floors and different things you did on each floor. And I just wanted to observe it first, um, but he refused as well. Okay. So that's a whole new rabbit hole. I'm going to go down. Okay. Here's another big question. When you're become doing the three month friendship stage can you both be sleeping with other people like friends with benefits right so the whole point of the no kissing for three months is i'm not controlling anybody so i'm not telling anybody in front of me who they need to be how they need to behave what they need to do so I'm not, I'm not creating a story that the person I, I met, the person I'm getting to know is loyal, is trustworthy, has work ethic, is responsible. I am in observation mode. Yes. At the end of the day, the person I'm picking, me, for a long-term relationship is somebody who makes it obvious they're interested in nobody but me, who has let me into their life and show me who they are hiding nothing. The person who has shown inclusiveness and honesty, the words coming out of their mouth is matching reality. Am I looking for the person who's looking for a body or am I looking for the man who's looking for me? Am I looking for the one who looks at me and goes, wow, no one compares to you. So when I was talking to a guy at the gym about this, he was like, I mean, yeah, Holly, any guy will agree and they'll date you for three months, but they'll be sleeping with somebody else during that three months until you're ready to sleep with them. Right. And so to that, I say, go find your body. But I'm looking for the person who brings me into his life. I'm looking for the person who has signs of loyalty and devotion. So um, if they're going to go see with other people, that's fine. I'm talking to people plural. So the one who's not focused on me isn't the one I'm going to choose at the end of the day. The one who hasn't introduced me to their people. Do you think the guy who's bringing me to his friend's dinner party is sleeping with someone else? I wouldn't put it past him. Wouldn't put it past him. But if his friends are solid couples who were mm. devoted, who, who are into each other, who function well together, like attracts like. So if his friend group is solid, loyal, devoted couples, do you think the one bringing me to this environment is the one sleeping around with a ton of people? 
man, I'm kind of jaded. So I would say, yeah, that can still happen. It can still happen, but the likelihood is reduced. Definitely likelihood is reduced. Yeah. Like attracts like if he's a player, then he's not bringing me around his people because why would he bring all the girls he plays with around his people? If he's, if he's a player, right. he's keeping me at arm's length from his group because he's playing me. If he's playing me, he's not including me. But if he sees me as the woman he wants to marry, but since I'm not having sex for the first three months, he's still sleeping with all the old hoes, you know, how would I know that? <clears throat> You're looking for the signs of him being more into you than anyone else. Okay. So is he responsive to you? If you're okay. like, because as you get deeper into this, you know, initially, like you're not making last minute dates. You want to know that people can plan ahead with you. But as you get deeper into creating a connection, developing a friendship, getting closer to each other. Okay. I also really liked... In your book where you said, if they kiss you, when, when you finally do kiss and it's not good, you're like, now let me kiss you. Let me show you how. Let me show you how. <laughs> That's such a great way to be like, stop, rewind. Let's try this again. Let's I like that. Her. Let's, I'm not going to, listen, I, listen, if you lick my face, I'm going to address you right away. Yes. I will not suffer a shitty kiss. I don't want your tongue in my mouth if I'm not ready for it. And I'm not ready for it until I feel passionate in the initial stage. When I first start kissing you, this is intimacy. This is a show mm -hmm. of intimacy and connection, but I'm not at passion yet. So I want it to be lips only. And the thing is, Holly, do you now, just right now, in the last five seconds, do you understand how I like to kiss? Yeah. Just like yeah. that. Just like that. I used my words and it gave you an understanding. It painted a picture, didn't it? Now let's yes. see when I do start kissing and you think after 10 seconds, we got some passion. You stick your tongue in my mouth. I'm going to pull back enough to break the kiss, but not the intimacy. And I'm going to go, yes. let me show you what I like. Yes. I love that. So seductive. Mm, absolutely. So I also love, so I listened to the, you, I watched a bunch of your YouTube videos um, and meditation and stuff. And so I listened to the one where you debated a lawyer <laughs> who was an absolute prick, by the way, totally. like he would not let you speak. He didn't hear he just kept repeating his own verbiage over and he didn't hear anything you were saying. And he kept saying um, that your rules were about controlling the other person. And you kept saying, no, it's about allowing time to get clarity. And I just love, I want people to understand that because, well, I understand it. Like it's, you can do what you want to do. This is my choice that I'm doing. If you want to walk the path next to me, you can. If not, go a different route. Exactly. Because I just want clarity. And honestly, I was talking to a guy about it in the gym. And he was saying, oh my gosh, that's too much. Three months and stuff. And I said, I understand why you think that that's too much. Because... You go out on a date with a woman and you're so excited and you just want to put it in her and then you walk, then you go home. But women are going out on a date with our biggest predator. Mm -hmm. We have everything to lose. Almost every woman I know has been sexually assaulted. So yeah, we want safety. The thing that makes women feel ready to have sex so much is that we feel safe and it's our choice. We're not doing it because you want it and we feel bad or you want it and we feel like, you know, we have to indulge you or you're going to get mad or you're going to rape us or something like that. So 
when I explained it to him that way, that really it's about three months to prove if you're a safe person or not. Yeah. He got it. Yeah. But I'm really disappointed that men don't know that about us. It's it's willful ignorance, my love, more than anything. You think so? Willful ignorance. Of course, because if they took a moment to think about it, they could come up with that answer themselves. Right? <laughs> okay, good. Ooh, good question. Um, you said in your book, I'm a big word person. You said if they... If you don't get butterflies, then turn him away. Page 101, I wrote down. So you said, what if you're so tired of being hit on by men? That's the thought of chatting them up turns you off. Here's the key. You need to start tuning into your intuition and approaching the men that stir up a response. If a man approaches you and you don't feel butterflies, by all means, turn him away. Now, that word butterflies, as you know, since you have written the book has created a lot of butterflies are trauma responding to trauma, right? It's anxiety and that we should not respond to butterflies. So what do you think about that? Um, what is that word you really mean? Like what? So what I don't want us to do is fatigue ourselves. We, I, I, I see people say, I've been going on so many dates now. The thought of it just makes me feel anxious. I'm tired of it. And that's what this is about. If you're tired of it, pull back. You have permission. It's okay to be single. It's okay to be happy. It's okay to hang out with friends. It's okay to not date. It's okay to not seek a relationship. The reason why you had that impulse in the first place is because we are creatures designed to procreate. And you were responding to a procreation drive that said, seek a mate, pair bond, make a baby. Uh -huh. If you're tired by the process, if you're tired of it all, pull back. If a guy comes up to you and you don't want to talk to him, don't give him the time of day. Oh, oh my God. You're so much like my sister, mm -hmm. which is great because I am doing better. I'm growing. I'm learning. I'm digging my heels in and, and really understanding, but God, if a man came up and spoke to me, I just would think it's so impolite to do that. And I would sit for an hour and talk to a man I wouldn't want to talk to. Well, can I give you an out? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You have to go now. <laughs> you said this on our last time. When I said, what about if he's over the house and we're watching a movie and you, and you said, you just use five words. You have to go now. That it's, is such a hard thing for people pleasing women to do. It takes courage. Courage. Truth. It takes you have to. and your heart is pounding, your palms are sweaty, your stomach's in a knot, your mouth goes dry at the mere thought of speaking the truth. But yes. when you are in an unpleasant situation for you, you don't have to please other people and suffer. You like he's you're you're seeing this as oh my god, this is one of those. Go, wait a sec, like literally hand in his face, wait a second. He's gonna what? right. So you get that pause, wait a second. I'm really sorry. It's not that I don't want to hear you, but I really have to go. So uh -huh. if he's nice, remove yourself. If you want to get rid of him, tell him to get lost. Yeah. See, I think that's a hard thing for women, especially ones who have, uh, you know, they're nice guys until you turn them down 
And then they turn into assholes and abusive and create scenes and stuff. And I think we're all trying to avoid that. Mm. Let them make a scene. It's not your responsibility. Walk away from the scene. You got feet. If they want to stay there and have a tantrum, just because you're talking doesn't mean I have to stay. So if they want to say something about the fact that I don't want to be there, I don't care. I'm walking away. I want to be like you when I go up, like, you're so good at this. You're, I, I watch a lot of your videos and you're just very much like, you get one chance, <laughs> you know, it, this is my boundary. Respect me. Oh, no. Okay. I'm out. Yeah. Like you're so freaking good at that. That's like your superpower. And the thing is I had to learn. I had yeah. to. And I had to develop it, which is, which, which, I mean, that's what gives me the authority to teach you because I was where you are and I had to learn to come to where I am. Mm -hmm. Do you, I, I, they, this is my theory. Now I've only been in a strip club like twice in my life. Okay. So Correct me if I'm wrong. My theory is, this is a judgmental theory too. So if I'm being judgmental, correct me as well. My theory, the story that I'm making up in my head is that um, most of the men that go to strip clubs are slimy. And so you learn time and time again, you, you were dealt with so many slimy people that you were able to create this thicker skin and and you really had to enforce your boundaries over and over. You had so much practice. Yeah, that helps. It did help for sure. Yes. Yeah. Would you say that the majority of men that go to strip clubs are slimy? And the majority of girls who work in strip clubs, yes. What a double whammy. That's a real that was really that was smart. Um, so you just had so much practice mm -hmm. and this is why people ask me on TikTok all the time, like, are you still dating? Will you still date? Da, 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 da. And I always say, absolutely. How else will I know if I'm getting better? I have to have the practice. It's so easy to sit at home and judge all these other women talking about dating and saying, Oh, you should have done this. You should have done that. Well, not until you get into that situation. So I have got to practice. I mean, that doesn't mean I'm going to go become a stripper, but. <laughs> it's so much fun. Oh, hi. oh, I would love it. If I didn't have kids, that would be such a fun thing to do. <laughs> My kids just would be grossed out by me. Um, okay. Another question. I know our time's almost up. Um, you talk in the book that men want a woman who's confident. Mm -hmm. Can you talk? So in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, that means like she's got like queen energy. Mm -hmm. Like she knows her, like you, you know, like she knows her worth. She hold, holds her head high. She's confident in her, herself and her capabilities versus sometimes people think I would see that they would say a confident woman is more like a boss babe or bossy or controlling. Mm -hmm. So how do you define that? So the words bossy and controlling are ascribed to girls, young girls who are taking charge mm -hmm. and so we take little girls in grade school showing leadership skills and calling them bossy and controlling because when it comes to the workforce when they're older it's supposed to be the boys who are in charge so mm -hmm. fuck bossy and controlling 
Let's be bossy and controlling. Let's control our environment. Let's boss around the people who are around us who are misbehaving. You have to quiet down or you have to go. But I'm in control of my environment. Bossy and controlling is never a bad thing. It puts you in charge. I'm going to own bossy and controlling if you're going to call me that. I'm going to add it to my confidence star. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I do understand that, but obviously a man nor a woman mm -hmm. wants to be with a partner who is controlling them because controlling is abusive, abusive. That's why we use a no kissing for three months data rule. I don't have to be bossy nor controlling when I pick a partner who does their part without being told. Oh, okay. I see what you're doing there. So you don't just simply don't pick ball partners who you feel the need to boss and control. Why would I pick somebody I have to change? Don't pick partners. <laughs> you feel the need to control. My man is a whole man. He does his responsibilities. He does his job. He has his ambitions. He does what he has to do around the house. I don't have to tell him anything. We don't boss each other around. We do our work without having to be told. I love that. It's so grown up. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I do want you to know that I've started my list. Thank God you have these extra pages back here. Yeah. Um, I've started my list on my value, the things that make me valuable. Like you said, you need 50. Yes. I think I have 20, 25 so far. Okay. And then I'm doing two lists. Another list is what do I want in my life? Yes. And then what do I want in a man? Yes. Now, how do you, how do you know? if you're picking the right man. Mm -hmm. So when you write your perfect man list, you have a very clear idea of what right is in terms of character and personality and those things that are going to align with you personally. There's a list that I throw up. So this is going to be backwards for you, I think, or is, is it not? No, it's perfect. perfect. Okay, so this right here, is my criteria for a hookup. <laughs> okay. Is my criteria for someone I keep. Discard, keep. So does he have to meet every single one of those things or is it a percentage or are you having an order? Let me read this to you and tell me which one you would live without, okay? Uh. Honesty. Like, stop me when I hit the one you would you would cross off, okay? Yeah. Okay. Honesty, respect, loyalty, trustworthy, patient, responsible, understanding, values, shares my goals and timelines, kind, generous, fun, mm. funny, compassionate, thoughtful, has work ethic, financially responsible, empathetic, ambitious, conscientious, open-minded, has impulse control, protective, safe, communicative. Okay, so like, what if he wasn't funny? Are you willing to cross that off your list? So your man has all of those things? Oh, more. This is the tip of the iceberg. I didn't even add particulars, like loves going for all you can eat sushi with me right? Uh, I didn't even put freedom on here. I didn't, I, I have, listen, I go to raves still, girlfriend. I need to be with yeah. somebody who, like, even if he doesn't come, he's like fine with it. I need freedom in my relationship. There's more to add to this. Did I write affectionate? I don't even think so. I didn't even, I need affection on here. That's particular to me. There's more to add. This is the tip of the iceberg. I guess I just haven't maybe 
met a lot of men like this or in my old neighborhood I was the social committee chair for the neighborhood and the welcome committee chair so I knew everybody and I knew about everybody all the gossip I wasn't a sharer of the gossip people came to me and told me it all and wanted to know like what to do about it to which my response every time was you go talk to them about that why are you coming to me um but there were I can think out of we had 287 homes in the neighborhood I knew everybody I can think of two couples that had relationships that I admired yeah there's not that many we are looking for the diamond in the rough the diamond the gold we got to dig through a lot of dirt don't we to go find that precious piece so like 80 percent of women are looking for this 20 percent of men right is what here's the thing though the ones who are truly clarifying what they're looking for knowing exactly what they're looking for i want you to think about when you got yourself a certain make a model of car did, did i bring yeah. up that? when you got a certain make a model of car when you got that particular car, did you suddenly start seeing it everywhere? Uh, yeah. Because yes. familiarity creates recognition. Okay. So when you become familiar, you're reading No More Assholes, you are defining who you should be with in a very concise way you are understanding the 12 character traits which identify a healthy selection in addition to the particular things you need in a partner now that you've created familiarity inside your brain it starts to get easier to recognize the cars yes i do believe that for sure so basically the list it's just they're non-negotiables the list and so don't put anything on there that's negotiable uh so when you were so so this these what i just read to you if yes. you're going to cross one of these off that's your choice yeah when you're writing your complete list one thing that i say is add a lot to it because you're if the more you put on the more you have on this the more leeway you give this is a short list you're going to add more to this, including particulars. Now, I might say loves to dance. My husband doesn't like to dance. He doesn't go dancing. So I'm okay with him not fulfilling this because he fulfills these. Yes. Yeah, those are more preferences, not necessities. Okay, let me write that down. Wait, where did I write that? Preferences... So when we talked last week, I gave you some homework to write a mantra. The mantra that brings in the man you want. Did you write that? You gave me that? I wrote down three things. I had to do the free, the meditation, yeah. maybe to Rich Pendleberry and read the book. Okay. And um, put the I'm control of myself. I didn't do a mantra thing, but tell me what you want me to do. Okay. Uh, so your homework this week is to con okay. continue with the meditation. Okay. Write your perfect man list. Yes. Complete your 50 positive. Yes. About yourself and create a mantra that is going, because you have mantras to facilitate and yeah, to love manifest, right? Yes, I love mantras. So create a mantra to facilitate and manifest your ideal partner. To manifest my ideal partner. You give me homework and I go down rabbit holes. I'm <laughs> like, I'm up at night, late, reading. My kids came into my bedroom and they're like, are you reading a book? Because I listen to books on Audible. I listened to like two books a month. So they were like, really, mom, you're actually reading? And I was like, yes, I have to highlight. I have to underline. I just... What do you think of No More Asshole so far? I think it's really good. And I think that 
I'm grateful that you spend the first half of the book talking about the you problem, you know, that you're the problem and, and I mean the problem, but yeah, we need to clean our little glasses, you know, we need to, this is all the work of cleaning your glasses so that you can see clearly the assholes and the mature men. And so, and that starts with us. So I'm literally just now on chapter 27, making first dates comfortable. So I'm, this is the part that I really am excited to dig into. So it's perfect. And it's uh, very easy to read. It doesn't have uh, huge psychology words that I have to look up, you know, which is really great. And it's a quick read too. I think I've, I've only spent like three hours reading. So it'll be maybe six hours total. Mm -hmm. So that's really good. I love it. I think it's good. And it's a book that I'm definitely going to have my daughter read. Yay. Oh, that was my other question. I know we're over time. What do you think about men reading this book? It would be the smartest thing they would ever do. Okay. Because we are doing a little book club on my TikTok. And there are some men that are, that bought it and want to read it. And I was like, oh, can my boys read this? Yeah, my boys should read this. So, because I have twin 14 year old boys. So, I have, so I love it. I have a book called Dating 101 for teenagers. If you, oh. in sex ed. So I do want you to go through it first because it is sex ed. It's called uh, Dating 101, Understanding the Derives Behaviors and Emotions We Call Love. So I divide us into three parts, the biological body designed to procreate, the logical mind designed to assess, and then your spiritual connections. You know, when you're not in the same room, but you get a text message, oh my God, I was just thinking about you, right? Yes. Those coincidence moments, that's actually your frequencies communicating, even if you're not in the same room. So that's really interesting that we can Love do it. Yes. Um, so for, you can have your boys read dating one, uh, dating 101. You can also have them read no more assholes, whatever they want to dive into reading no more assholes. is like a man reading Cosmo to better understand how women think. So yeah. a smart thing to do. Um, how old yeah. is your daughter? 15. Okay. So dating 101 for her too. And no more assholes. If you want her to dive into that. Yeah. She's very much like you. She expects a lot from the men in her life that want to date her. She tells them the, here's the standard. You didn't meet it. Bye. And I, she's now she didn't, I didn't raise her in purity culture or church and, and stuff. So that has certainly made a difference, but I'm so proud of her in that area. I'm so proud of her. She's texting me now. I got to go pick her up from school. Okay. Holly, how are you feeling? Uh, I would say the one word is empowered, yeah. you know, like what I've been spending so much of my time dating people to make them feel better and not focusing really on how do I feel in this situation? I don't like mad at myself for that. But, but definitely empowered. And the more that I talk to people about it, especially men, the more I'm like, Chantel said you would say that. <laughs> oh my God, she's right. Mama so knows. yes, I feel great. I feel really good about it. Yeah. And, and I'm super, hopefully tonight I'll finish the rest of the book. Okay. Um, I want you to go ahead and book your next session for next week. And let's keep this train chugging along, Holly. Definitely. And then uh, I'm going to do book club with my people. Would you want to join us for that? Or Yes, let's do it. Okay. Good, because I'm sure they'll have a ton of questions. Yeah. Like I'm I do too. I'm in. If they, uh, like, if they let me tape it, and publicize it 
I'm a hundred percent. And if I could use this for content, I'm a hundred percent in. Okay. I'll talk to them about that. I don't even know, like, I haven't even figured it all out yet, but we will. Okay. Next week I'll make an appointment. I'll have the book read. I'll have done all my homework. And I do have a first date this Saturday night. Love. And he actually follows me on TikTok. So I said, I would love for you to go and watch my videos that I did on Valentine's Day. And I'd love to have a conversation about what your thoughts are about it. Nice. So um, he's like, he, he wrote back, he was like, I think, yeah, that should definitely be a phone call conversation. So we'll, so we're setting up a time to talk about it, but. Okay, good, good. Right. All right, uh, have, an, have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you next week. Yeah, thank you, Chantel. I appreciate you. You're welcome, my love. Bye. Bye, honey.